tell the uh, auto editing that we have started. Um, and then we're gonna have Gus is coming up with actually a package that was invented because he was making a presentation for this club. So it'll be interesting to see how that is coming along. Uh, and then Lydia uh, is scheduled to be up in September. Um, I'll have to talk to you. I have to check the date on that, Lydia, how that compares to our studio or pause account. Um, oh, what's the date of it? Yeah. It's September 9th. I can't remember pause account, but we'll sort that I think out. It's like the 17th. I think it's the yeah. 17th or 20th. Yeah. That sounds right. Yep. Okay. So we're good there. And then I've got October. So, um, I think we're good, but just the sign up link is still in the um, channel. We've got November and December and then going into next year available. And with that, uh, I will hand it over to, um, I'm sorry if I pronounce your name incorrectly, but uh, Mio Min U. That's perfect. Uh, all right. Well, I'm ready to people who got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm glad because I, uh, people misspell my name a lot, so I'm conscious of those things. Um, and yeah, you'll be talking to us about a uh, person, personal budget manager, and I'll let you introduce it from there. Awesome, thanks. Okay, so yeah, so thank you very much. Um, so my name is Mio Min U. Uh, you can just call me Mio. Uh, so, so today I, I will be talking about Shiny integration with extended user authentication modules in R. So let's see what that's about. But before that, um, I want to talk about uh, a little bit about myself. Um, well, you can contact me on email, Twitter, GitHub, uh, blog. Hey, I'm a postdoc fellow at the University of Manitoba here in Winnipeg uh, in, in Canada. Um, so I'm an I, I have medical, I, I'm a medical medical doctor in training, and I'm an epidemiologist, but I do data science, bioinformatics, and also I love uh, uh, integrating this into like uh, grounded in implementation science. Uh, looking for uh, like policy and practice change in public health. So I, I come from a different background from population health science and public health. And I'm very, very interested and I absolutely love R. So I always wanted to learn about R programming and also uh, explore ways to better visualize my data. And I... <laughs> enjoy learning new and shiny things, including this one. So yeah. So my main area of interest uh, has nothing to do with uh, the top today's topic, <laughs> personal budget, but like uh, this is personal interest, but like my research um, interests include uh, broadly infections, but with a more focus on HIV, sexually transmitted infection, tuberculosis, malaria, I did these uh, notorious infections and diseases. And also I loved uh, doing data visualization with R about them. So today um, I will mainly talking about these uh, two packages. The first one is Shiny Odd X, which is uh, for the standard user authentication and Mbudget, uh, which is essentially uh, the personal finance uh, manager app. Okay. And you can also visit my website to uh, read about more about my projects. Uh, so essentially, like uh, I do these things, uh, sort of uh, keep myself going, learning and practicing in R. So we do have an R for researcher, which I initiated, uh, which is a monthly event like, like this, but we do that. Uh, Every, uh, I mean, uh, Thursday, uh, not every Thursday, uh, Thursday every month. Um, so it is basically um, more related to bioinformatics because I am collaborating with folks from uh, bio, bioinformatics department uh, at uh, U UM. And the other is, uh, so I'm originally from Myanmar. So I also initiated an online group uh, called Myanmar R User Group, which is an online. Uh, weekly events uh, advertised on social media. Uh, so I organize and facilitate art-related tutorials um, on that event. And then 
basically I, uh, I, I do my walk in R and I build things R uh, for fun. And yeah, so this uh, project is essentially a side project but related to my uh, sort of personal habit um, of maintaining my finance. So yeah, there, there is um, a snapshot of like uh, how I managed my budgets uh, back in uh, 2021 sort of and then you can see that i have a very a very simple uh, uh spreadsheet uh, finance manager um i developed uh with uh, excel like it's a very um uh simple one so we got like an entry for what do i want it's also uh, for um uh, transaction expenses and also uh for my income as well and then i have a small dashboard like very simple dashboard um uh, that indicates some uh some of the metrics uh or indicator that i want to track over the over the month so it's it's a very simple thing um it's developed in uh good old excel ms excel and then i put it on google drive so that's my main thing right but i wanted to do something completely online so, so this is like a hobby right for me like i i wanted to do something um, these days you can easily download the app or use um, online uh, services to, to do track this kind of thing even your own banking application has this kind of uh, functionality and cap capacity to do this but like hey why not why not do this in R and shiny so back then my wish list that is like okay I want these um, make my life a bit shiny but more complicated. So I want something completely uh, online storage. Then I want something like uh, use a restrict my my sites to uh, outsider. So I wanted to add a bit of um, user access control uh, authentication for secure access. And then this is basic uh, database creation. So CRUD sort of operation. And then I want to do it for free, right? That's uh, that's sort of like an important factor here as well. So, so yeah. So I I also I'm also doing. Uh, I know a little bit about R back then, and I wanted to do something about that. Uh, do fun projects here. So that's that's kind of my thing. Okay. So I spent a few months like this side project. So I'm not doing this uh, for uh, full time. So after several months, I have my first application. Uh, this is fully written in Shiny, using Shiny package. And a few other uh, extend, um, extension packages uh, like Shiny JS, Shiny HTML, HTML widgets, Shiny, um, some, some other projects. So it's like a very simple um, project that I have uh, basically this is a snapshot of user access controls screen so you can basically uh, log in or even sign up using your email so that's what i want but yeah so even here i implemented the uh, permanent storage um, uh, to with a mongo tv um uh, via mongo live package and i sort of add the communication component so the, the, the via Blastula package. So what does that mean? It means that uh, whenever a user sign up, it's going to send an email to that user uh, user's email uh, with a verification code, and the user has to put verification. So it's uh, it's the sort of like a verification step. So and then when a user successfully sign up or register an account, it's going to send an email like a welcome email uh, to the budget that. So it's like. Uh, um is kind of like <laughs> developed but like uh, not only for myself but like uh maybe i have some uh, someone from my family i wanted to use them but on a separate account on the same system okay so why don't why don't we use a sort of like a, um uh, online sort of database database management system where you have uh, multiple users uh, to access into the uh database okay so yeah, so what was missing back then? So this is like in uh, late 2021. It's like very massive codes. 
And then I kind of like hand coded everything, uh, including this user authentication, like sign in page, sign up page, everything, um, like in the same uh, application in one script. Like, so it's a very uh, messy code. Uh, it's not modular. It's very hard to uh, maintain. Um, and even it's, it's, it's quite challenging to even understand after I look at, uh, look at the codes like a few months. And then, yeah, email, some of the emails credentials and Mo MongoDB credentials are also hard coded. So uh, it's, it's like a very poor, poorly written uh, application. So at the time, uh, me and my wife, we are using it, uh, but like, uh, no fancy stuff like no password recovery function, uh, and and it, it is quite baggy uh, at some point. So I kind of spent a few times and looking for uh, what kind of packages uh, uh, provide user authentication. Uh, of course, I understand shiny app, uh, shiny app .io and other shiny proxy, other kind of hosting services provide this kind of authentication. Like if you pay them or premium services. But like uh, uh, one of the main motivation is I want them for free, right? So, okay, um, these are very useful, but um, at a cost of dollar. And then I have, uh, I found two packages. Uh, maybe there, there, there could be many, many more packages out there, but I find these two main pack packages for user authentication, like uh, for uh, to be um, uh, deploying in shiny uh, apps.io. So shiny auth uh, and shiny manager, very useful packages. But uh, so far, like I have explored, I, I haven't uh, seen uh, functionality that uh, let user to sign up or even uh, reset the password, uh, password if they forgot their password. So yeah, so I said, huh. Why, why don't I just write uh, write one, right? So that's why this package is developed, shiny odd X, or oh, making my life more complicated. <laughs> uh, I could just easily use the premium services or whatever uh, to, for the authentication. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to one. I mean, uh, there are a few sort of uh, objectives here. I want to learn more about R and shiny, and then I want to. Um, well, have a project uh, to showcase my skills. So why not make a package? So this is so this package is essentially built upon the shiny odd R package uh, because shiny odd R package is uh, is already given uh, uh, functionality for to, to for sign in uh, purposes. So essentially, this is the uh, uh, scheme or schematics uh, for the package, right? So we have four different modules. Well, one is like for sign-in, right, in the middle. So we have sign-in, which is essentially the same. Um, um, uh, I modified a few codes, but uh, largely um, taken the codes from uh, Shiny Auth R package. And then sign out, which is another module. And then if you want, you can add two, two more modules. One is a uh, sign up module, which is uh, basically, uh, well, we can see the code later. So basically it, it will give a UI for, the, for this uh, nice button up down here, uh, create new uh, account. And then, uh, and the other is a password, password recovery module, which is uh, this uh, forward password. And then these are all interconnected. And then uh, to use sign up and um, password recovery modules, you need MongoDB at least, like a uh, database, uh, online database, which they can talk to, uh, retrieve some previous record to check whether they have uh, this, the new user has already been uh, signed up, like username or e email uh, has been already used up or, yeah, also like password recovery, like find an email that's all already be entered in, in a system. So these are the two additional uh, modules that the Shiny Auth X package um, offer. So it's like, if you look at uh, the top uh, corner, the top right corner, you got uh, 
a nice um, shiny RX logo there. Anyway, so these are the four modules. So let's talk about how to use that uh, in a few minutes. So uh, this package is uh, quite recent, so it's not on CRAN or any uh, any other database yet. Uh, so you, get, you just have to uh, uh, install it from GitHub. Um, and then basic sign sign out, you just need a few lines of code. Uh, so, so first you need to load these uh, packages. Uh, Shiny or X pack, uh, packages offer a, a function that's called create dummy user, which is a, uh, uh, which sort of gave you a user base. So did this a user base? Like I, I basically didn't change that much from a shiny odd uh, packages. So essentially the same uh, username, password, name, email, uh, permission, and date created. So these are the, the sort of default um, columns that, that's been uh, created. And then all you have to do is like um, create a UI. Um, so, and then the first module, sign module, it has uh, it is a few parameter. One is the uh, ID, and then there are like a few um, arguments that you need to pass whether you want to um, add a password recovery module. And if you don't want it, then just uh, set it to false. So for this, uh, for, for right now, we, we are only interested in basic sign and sign out. So um, we set it for, we set false to both um, both modules. And then up here we got a. Uh, sign up module so that's for a ui so it's very easy like uh, like the original package a shiny or a package and then for the sour side it's the same it's a very uh, it's a very similar setup so we got a sign in server which is uh, which basically takes in that user base that we have created because we have to cross check whether the user has already an account and then, of course, there is like a Soria hash behind the scenes. So uh, it's not very like open or uh, open season, but there, there's been something, uh, some some kind of uh, um, security sort of um, devil step there. And then to sort of uh, connect back to the sign out uh, mod module, uh, you have to give a real value or sign out underscore init function. We just define up there. So it's like, uh, you don't need to change anything. Like you just copy paste these, uh, um, uh, this line of codes and then uh, change the user base. That's the only thing different. So the sign up, the sign up module is basically is, uh, taking the credential where the user authentication, uh, looking at the user authentication. And then if the user is um, valid or authenticated, then uh, the sign out uh, button will appear like uh, wh whenever you sign in. And then when it is clicked, then it's going to lock out the, um, uh, the UI. And at the end, we, we can basically uh, print out something. So this is like a very setup, which is essentially a similar setup uh, that the Shiny Odd R package uh, provides. Okay, so. Uh, we can also do this uh, using MongoDB using uh, via MongoLite package, right? So uh, this is like a very uh, this this URL is a test URL which uh, which you can use to test this kind of connection. So uh, essentially, we we use MTCom because it's the only name that is allowed uh, for testing purposes. So. I'm not going to change that here. So you can also drop. Uh, so these are the methods um, that MongoDB allow um, to provide um, uh, to to sort of manipulate the MongoDB databases. Okay. So down here, instead of creating database, uh, creating the user base from the uh, SD uh, table, look at storage. I basically insert this. Uh, uh, whatever we have created user base into this connection. So it's um, uh, basically written uh, to the cloud, MongoDB cloud. And then we can call the same function, but instead of the user base, uh, we can 
uh, we have to do something like this. Okay, so essentially we can we have to retrieve the whole data sets uh, and then pass it to this uh, science tower function. We're just going to check whether these uh, users already uh, exist in, uh, in in the database. Yeah, so this is basis, uh, how basic science and science uh, works, uh, either using local storage or uh, using MongoDB's uh, cloud storage. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to interrupt me. Um, so I'm going to uh, talk about a standard SIAP and password reset module, right? So what, what do we have to do if we have to, uh, uh, if we want to uh, add a sign up and password recovery module? So essentially you just do this, uh, you just add two, these two lines, right? So one is sign in module, uh, which we already talked about. So basically you have to set true to this, uh, these two arguments. And then you do sign up UI, uh, give it an ID, and then forget password UI, give it the ID. That's it. That is for the uh, UI side. For the server side, uh, there's only two lines of code. So, but you have to pass the credential that is uh, that is the output of the sign server. So the credential is coming from sign server, and then it's going to pass to uh, sign app server. And then Mongo, and you can also pass, you have to also pass the MongoDB. And also for the password uh, server, the same. So it's essentially the same, um, the same setup. So you just have to copy paste. There's no, um, no additional uh, things that you have to change. Uh, unless you want to change the UI, then you can do it, of course, in the UI uh, uh, functions. So, but, how do we communicate, right? So we are email. So in addition to that, if you want to use the email functionality, like uh, the user sort of um, sign up the account and you, you want to send the verification code and then welcome codes after he has uh, successfully registered a, an account, or maybe he uh, reset a password and has successfully reset the password, then you want to send emails, then that is, uh, that is also very doable with this package. So I used a blast tool, which is um, which is a very nice package to, uh, for email emailing. Um, so the, uh, I only use two function out of this package. One is compose email, compose underscore email, and then SMTP underscore send. And of course, you have to pass the credential file. If you want to, if you want to know how to do that, you can also uh, check their. Uh, vignette, uh, they have a very nice vignette on how to create the credential file. So, so far I've tested with uh, Outlook. Um, last year I tested with uh, uh, the uh, Gmail, but uh, right now Gmail sort of enhanced their security status. So um, there, there are some walks around, but like um, it's not like very uh, as flexible as uh, Outlook. But anyway, let's talk about it. So, so how do we do that? So to do that, you have to create an email template, right? So for to send an email, we have like uh, the sender email address uh, to to which address you're going to send. And also like, what is the subject? What is the body and what is the folder? So you have to define that. But uh, if you use the shine or the X, then, then this email template is already, uh, has already set the template for you. Uh, but you, of course you can change that. Um, so, but for the essential, like if you want, if you, if you are fine with using the default template, then you can, you can easily pass these two parameter and then you are, you are good to go. So the credential is basically like, uh, you have to use the blastular credential function to just source the, um, either it's an outlet or Gmail or whatever, uh, email, uh, provide service provider you use. And then, uh, of course, the email that you want uh, to use to send these emails. And then for sign up, essentially, like if you want to use the email, then what is, you just have to add this uh, email equal template um, argument, email argument. So that's it, right? So it's not, uh, it's, it's quite simple. So this, this is the template, right? This is the temp, default template. Of course, uh, I 
basically use the um, approach employing uh, employing uh, via the blastula package. So they, they have this. Uh, uh, basically, they compile HTML and CSS uh, using MD uh, function uh, within a package. Um, you can also read that up uh, and create your own templates for for all of, uh, for whatever you see on on this image template. Okay, so far, like um, we have talked about how to use email, uh, MongoDB, uh, and four modules uh, for for this purposes, right? So. Yeah, that is uh, that's sort of complete my and ambition or like wish list wish list of uh, user authentication to my budget app. So it's like okay, uh, let's let's plan my budget app again. Um, maybe we can improve this time. So, but I got stuck like at the first step. What should I give? What name should I give? Right. So it's like I, I got I can relate to these kind of uh, images and feeling. Uh, for the first um, uh, for the first few attempts where I can I am still exploring wow, what to give uh, what my budget app uh, should be named I don't know after my son or after my uh, whatever so uh, finally I res I also resort to like ChatGPT hey ChatGPT what sh what names should I give <laughs> so it's like yeah it's, it's it's quite a hilarious moment but yeah. Okay, so how how does this budget uh, application work? So, as you can see, like uh, we got a shiny app uh, down uh, down there, like um, uh, the uh, computer and phone sort of icon there, and then in the middle, like it's going through the uh, shiny odd X package uh, to process the user authentication, and of course, it can also send send out emails, and then uh, basically communicate with the MongoDB app there. So this is kind of like a very um, um, uh, brief overview of the app. Like it's a very simple app. I just want to showcase this uh, user authentication. And then I, I created like a wireframe of the, like this uh, budget app could be. So I got a few like, uh, of course, with the help of ChatGPT, like, hey, what kind of uh, uh, data, uh, data tables um, I should be creating uh, for a person of finance manager. Anyway, this is like, a, uh, you have to have a user base and there's TBL underscore user. Uh, you, have, you, you should have tables for expense, income, saving, account, et cetera. But it's, it is a very simple um, budget app. And then a few other things that, that um, uh, I also consider, okay, I want to make a, a robust, uh, a shiny application. So um, I, of course, I read a book, and then um, the Golan framework is essentially like a like um, sort of my my favorite uh, framework right now. So I, I use that I use that in uh, other projects in my work as well. So uh, it's a pretty nice um, neat uh, framework, and also it uh, uh, streamline uh, this application as a package. So yeah, and then. I also do some rapid prototyping using a few other um, uh, packages uh, from Absalom uh, using like shiny dot and semantic dot dashboard. But I find that, uh, um, well, uh, the UI are quite great, but I didn't want to like put more efforts into um, uh, writing HTML and CSS for my. Uh, user authentication. So I just, okay, let's do it a uh, shiny dashboard. So of course, uh, shiny ifs and Apache, quite fun, uh, fantastic uh, packages for rapid prototyping. Uh, and also, yeah, of course, uh, UI integration with shiny um, and authentication module, as I mentioned earlier, I, I tried these packages, but like, uh, it doesn't seem to like readily compatible with shiny app as the UI seems uh, quite a bit off. So yeah, I mean, like I can put more efforts or uh, into to make it uh, more compatible with all these uh, packages. And if you are also interested in uh, contributing, then you're welcome. And then I check out this uh, uh, example from Shiny Auto, uh, uh, how they use the Shiny dashboard uh, integration. So I basically applied that um, 
since BS4 dash and Shiny dashboard, they use sort of the same framework. So I finally, the finalization is uh, BS4 dash um, is used. Anyway, there is an email module component, Outlook more feasible, GMA not so much now, uh, starting this, uh, this year. And database integration with MongoDB. I mean, I find MongoDB quite um, uh, flexible. Uh, one, because they offer like a free sort of account to use at a very low sort of uh, data bandwidth. Uh, so at no extra cost. So for my purpose, like writing a few lines of uh, text uh, data, then uh, this is like the perfect fit. And of course, you can also uh, go to the, to the root of uh, SQLite as in MySQL. That is also fine, but uh, currently not compatible with the Shiny on X that we can put more efforts into doing that, but right now I'm not doing that. Um, anyway, develop, developing the rest of the budget manager application. So of course I have these two um, packages. One is the Shiny Art X for authentication and the other is and budget to showcase this authentication. Um, yeah. So I'm also a very big fan of uh, creating logos. So, hey, I have these packages, so why not create these logos? Anyway, so for disclaimer, yeah, I'm not a web security expert, so I can't really um, uh, guarantee like this, uh, this kind of authentication procedure to be foolproof, 100% like uh, safe. But anyway, uh, the original author of uh, Shiny Art R, uh, he also said a very similar uh, statement. So I basically read it. it uh, whatever he's saying, I agree with it. And then, uh, yeah, I just, I also put it there on my, on, on my GitHub page as well. So uh, use uh, the, the packages at your own risk, but I think it's, it's quite um, an interesting package uh, for like a very simple application uh, with uh, like low risk or security. But anyway, if, to, if you do use the packages from your line, let me know. Anyway, this is a screenshot of the <laughs> final application. And yeah, we can just take a look at the demo, right? So let's go back and then let's fire up the demo. Yeah, so my screen is a bit wide, so some uh, at some point it may look a bit weird. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so like if you put some random uh, username, like of course it's going to give you like a standard user. I user input. And then the other thing is I can also uh, click here, create a new account. It's going to give us the sign up module here. And then you can sign in and then it's going to, for example, like, okay, say I am this. So my name is this, oh, well, um, here's my email. And then here's my name. And then, yeah, of course I can get the verification code. So if the username is already taken, it's going to say that. So I will just change that. I'm not sure if that works. So you may already use, so yeah. So we have to change that, right? So anyway, and then when it's successful, it's going to send an email to you. And then it's going, I mean, of course you can also try and play around with it. And then uh, when you get a code, you uh, put a code here and click the sign up and it's going to uh, create an account for you. And then we can of course go back to um, um, to our sign page. And then let's let's look at the forget password. So of course I already have this uh, my email, right? So say that, I don't know, like, um, so user at uh, gmail.com. So that is something uh, that is not in the database. So you may not form. So this kind of, uh, well, it's not very uh, complicated, but yeah. So if it is there, then you, you can search and then you can send a verification code. It's going to get, it's going to um, send me a verification code. And of course I can uh, change my password again. So I can just go back there and then, uh, okay, let's, let's uh, do this. So maybe not admin first. So let's do user one and password one. 
Yeah, so this uh, is a very simple. Uh, you're welcome by a very simple dashboard uh, for your finance. So you got balance, expense, income, saving, and then based on whatever you have import, and then you will have this kind of uh, 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 this kind of graph, some some graphs there. And yeah, of course, um, you can use it for whatever purpose. Um, uh, for this is for a user one, and if you want to lock out, then this down here you can uh, find out the sign up button here. So it's going to take you back to the signing page. So let us look at the admin because I have some data in the admin uh, account. So it's like for testing purposes, uh, there is nothing like uh, it does not have my entire sort of uh, uh, personal finance history there. So uh, anyway. So, so far I don't have anything input between uh, this month. So of course I have to go back to like uh, a few months back. So go back to, I don't know, January 1st and then filter. So it's going to give us uh, some graphs. As I said, like I have a very wide screen. So uh, it's going to, uh, it's, it's distorting a bit, but yeah. So this is what you get. So we have a summary overview. And then we have a, a summary for each uh, category. Anyway, and then you can go to each uh, transition, uh, each either expense, income, or savings. And then, of course, you can also do the um, several uh, operation. Like uh, so, you can look at in this drop uh, drop down menu. Like you can add new record, delete records, and import. So essentially, I use uh, DT's, uh, DT's package, a uh, data table. So essentially, uh, if you want to add new, then for example, let's do this uh, new one. So for example, like uh, budget manager, and then you can say, okay, I don't know, I have to pay 2000, something like that. So if you add that, then it's going to give me, uh, yeah, it's going to add one. And then for from DT's data table, uh, you can basically uh, click anything you want. So it's, uh, it allows multiple selection. And then if you want if you want to select like the whole list, then you can press down shift key and then select all, right? So for example, I want to delete these two. So I can just uh, select them and then delete. So it's going to delete uh, things. Of course, you can also import. So yeah, so if you want to import, then you can just click import and it's going to, um, you can choose a file or even if you want to download the template and, uh, you know, if you already have an Excel sheet, if you want to import it, then that is okay. And you can download the this template and then fill up whatever data you have and then click import button. It's going to import just fine. Yeah, so the same UI for income. Like uh, you can put whatever you want. And so the same menu, you can also import uh, if you have a lot of in income history. And of course the same with saving. And then, so we have two categories, sorry, two level, uh, two variables. One is the category, which is like, okay, whether you want to, you want housing, uh, transportation, food, et cetera. And then the other is the, um, the, the account or account type that you have, like if you have multiple accounts, I don't know how many uh, one has in on average, but uh, maybe he could have multiple uh, saving account, credit account, checking account, whatever account types he has. Uh, essentially, you can change it here, uh, so go to setting, and then of course you can you have to expenses, so you can. Uh, so this this is my default, right? So you can change everything here. So for example, like you can add new record, delete these uh, categories or reset. So if you do reset, it's going to give you the same thing. So for example, like I said earlier, you can press shift key down and then delete everything. So it's the expense category is empty and then you can reset it. So it's going back to system default, like which I have imported. But of course you also, 
can um, change this category, for example, if you go to expand stand, we have housing, right? So let's say that um, we change housing to something more, I don't know, descriptive. So uh, we don't want housing, but we want housing rent. I don't know, with my name. So if I change that, it's going to change everything, right? So if it's going to change here as well. Okay. Maybe it's a bad. <laughs> I need to look at it. Um, it should change everything here. So anyway, I'm not sure why this is not changing, but yeah, I have to test it again. Um, yeah, it seems like it's not updating this category. So yeah. Okay, anyway, so this, this is a very simple shiny app uh, to sort of manage personal thing. Um, I plan to use it like uh, for my, who, well, uh, to, to keep my uh, finance books up to date. Uh, yeah. And let's lock out. Okay. So, yeah, I think this is the, let's go back here. Um, hmm. Did I do something wrong or? Yeah, that was uh, yeah, very cool. We've got uh, just, <laughs> that's the only comment so far. Um, <laughs> I, I love, so I have played a lot. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I have a few slides, uh, like one, yeah. yeah so just okay. summarize like uh, quickly, like- okay. I, I, Basically, left uh, to learn R, <laughs> so it's not like uh, my main work here, but like side project. But I really love it. I have made uh, I have I have made a lot of mistakes here in this project, as well as uh, in my even in my work. So I think mistakes uh, sort of makes you um, better, <laughs> and practice <laughs> makes your code better. And then yeah. I love to share with other people that what I've done, what I've done, and what I wanted to do. So my now wish list is to write more unit tests so that we can prevent uh, that kind of error mistakes that uh, we have seen earlier. I also want to automate this kind of deployment process uh, and also version control with Docker and so on. Uh, so far, I have only used R uh, end uh, basically to control the package um, version, but not the whole operating system. So. Yeah, I mean, there are tons of things to learn, but yeah. That's it, thank you, back to John. All right, yeah. All right, yeah, no, that, that was uh, that was really cool. Um, I've done a lot, or I, I'm very interested in auth with Shiny. That's a, an area that feels a little kind of underdeveloped. So it's cool to see another um, example of how to deal with that. and. <laughs> with the usual caution that I think a lot of us who are working in Chinese, it's like we're not security experts. Um, but if you know, if anyone's watching this who is, um, I, I yeah, you have a link in the in the slides to right. your um, your repo. Um, trying to find, I've got that open here somewhere handy, so I can put it in the chat. Um, awesome. That yeah, uh, you know. I assume that you would welcome any help if anyone ha notices anything yeah, that could be improved security wise or uh, otherwise. Uh, is there anything else that you are like particularly hoping to get feedback on? Because I mean, especially the security uh, aspect of this thing, right? So yeah, I understand that you can use premium services for from hosting companies and then, you know, like, Top notch, get top notch um, security authentication, secure access. But like um, for someone who don't have this kind of resources, for example, mm -hmm. I'm sure the, if you're working for big companies or like for uh, dedicated projects, then I'm sure you will have it. But like for side project where you want to incorporate uh, your work. Uh, at very little cost or at no cost at all. So that might be an alternative uh, solution. But yeah, security is a bit big uh, concern. So yeah. All right. Um, very cool. 
Does anyone have any other thoughts before we uh, go ahead and wrap it up? Looks like, you know, again, we've said a couple comments in the, the chat. Um, yeah. I, I shared your links to make sure everyone can, can find you. Um, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. I will see everybody in about four weeks or various places on Slack or different book clubs before then. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.